The Chicago Police Department faces a class action lawsuit over its stop and frisk practices. And attorneys say the number of plaintiffs could be massive. More than two million people might be eligible to join a class action lawsuit over the Chicago Police Department's stop and frisk practices. That's according to attorneys suing CPD and the city. A lawsuit that was recently certified as a class action by a federal judge. The plaintiffs argue CPD disproportionately targets young and middle-aged black and brown men with stop and frisk tactics in violation of their constitutional rights. Joining us are Rashawn Lindsay. He's one of the plaintiffs in the suit and attorney Antonio Romanucci of the firm Romanucci and Blandin. We asked the city and the police department for comment. The city's law department says it does not comment on ongoing litigation. The police department did not respond to a request for comment. Uh, Antonio Romanucci and Rashawn Lindsay, thanks to you both for joining us. Um, Antonio. Antonio, let's start with you, please. Uh, when are police actually allowed to make a street stop and what do you accuse them of actually doing? So police are allowed under the law, under, under a 50 year old law called Terry v. Ohio. They're allowed to make what are called street stops, but only under very certain conditions. They need what's called reasonable, articulable suspicion that either a crime has been committed or that one will be committed in order to make a constitutional stop. What we're alleging is that the city of Chicago did not follow the law, in this case, Terry v. Ohio, and that they made random uh, stops that targeted black and Hispanic people. They made stops to the tune of over two million of them. And, and that's why we're saying that this is a, a good class that, that was certified by Judge Andrea Wood because these were unconstitutional stops. Uh, Rashawn Lindsay, what was your experience uh, being stopped by CPD? Uh, well, I was just walking at night with my cousin and a friend. And one minute I got my headphones in my ear, walking down the street back on my mama's house. Next minute I have a taser on me and I'm being told to put my hands up. There's no warning, no siren. Just turn around, tase. You don't want to get tased, put your hands up. Hands on right up. And, and what happened then? Just, uh, I mean, it sounds like nothing came of that, that stop. Were you charged with anything? What came of that? No charges whatsoever. We were handcuffed to the roof of, to each other, brought to the hood of the car, searched, all our stuff pulled out of our pockets, asked if we had marijuana, of course. We didn't. Uh, after they ran our IDs, they said we were some we were one of the good ones, and they just let us go. No reason given why we were stopped at all. Now, Antonio Romanucci, according to the evidence that you submitted, between 63 and 71 percent of stops between 2010 and 2017 were black residents. Between 17 and 21 percent uh, were Latinx, and 7 to 13 percent were white. Based on all of that uh, and what you mentioned earlier, how many people do you think could be a part of this class action? Well, what we know is this, that in the year prior to the lawsuit that was filed, in the full calendar year of 2014, there were 716,000 of these stops that were made. Not one of these stops led to an arrest. Zero over 716,000. Not one of these stops led to the confiscation of an illegal gun or illegal drugs. So that was in one year. We know that over a four to five year period, there were approximately two million or more of these stops. So that's only in the class period. So you can imagine that there are many, many other people that have been subjected to this unconstitutional practice of uh, of no suspicion of having no reasonable articulable suspicion of having committed a crime or about to commit a crime so the, the numbers are staggering uh, just absolutely staggering but we know that in this class period there are at least two million people who were subjected to a stop with no arrest two million uh rashawn lindsay uh being one of them uh, rashawn why did you want to be a part of this suit uh, I thought it would bring about a good change, that we finally had an opportunity to change the police system in and of itself from the inside, because it's, it's quite frankly inexcusable for that many people to be stopped for zero reason and no arrests. 
Antonio, back to you. We know that CPD for several years has been going through an effort that is supposed to reform its stop and frisk practices under an agreement with the ACLU. Has that brought about any change? We, we haven't seen any meaningful change. They, they, they did bring out what's called an investig investigatory uh, report, uh, or uh, I forgot the exact acronym that they came out with, but they're not training on, on this new stop and frisk policy. And that's part of the problem. The city of Chicago creates policies, they create orders, but then they don't train on them appropriately. And that's part of the opinion that came out from the judge in this case is that the city of Chicago has a custom practice and policy to not train on these policies and therefore leads to unconstitutional practices. Rashawn Lindsay, what impact do you think, you know, being frequently stopped and frisked by CPD officers has on the people in the community, not just by those who experience it, but also those who witness it and know about it? Well, there's already a big distrust in the community of the police. Uh, the frequent stops and the frisk for no reason that only erodes trust even further. Uh, makes no one wants to call the police when something goes wrong. Handle it yourself type of mentality. Police can't be trusted and they won't handle it well. So it, it completely erodes trust. Antonio, what would you like to see come of this lawsuit? Well, clearly there has to be some absolute deep cultural change because we're not only talking about the class period that was certified by the judge, but we're really talking about decades and decades of a longstanding culture of mistrust between community members and police. People ask, well, why do people run? Why do people panic when they have police encounters? Well, we know that this the continued drip of stop and frisk of distrust between community members has led to this. It's led to middle income flight from the city of Chicago. So unless we make the changes necessary, which include obviously a very comprehensive training practice as to what is reasonable articulable suspicion, when a person can be stopped and then regain the trust of people like uh, Rashawn and the millions of other people in this city, then we will see systemic change. Until then, we won't have change. And that's why we want City Hall to come to the table. We will walk there and we want change to happen so that we can be the city that we say that we are. We are a great city. Let's be one. And before we let the two of you go, Rashawn Lindsay, what is your message to people who are interested in possibly being a part of this suit? Well, number one, I would say report it. Uh, if you believe something and just happen to you, if your advice violated, report it. Whether it be anonymous or you want to put your name out there, definitely report it. Number two, I'll look back at any time you were stopped and ask yourself if your rights are violated. Uh, no one thing I'll say, know your rights. As long as you know your rights, you'll be good. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Our thanks to attorney Antonio Romanucci and plaintiff Rashawn Lindsay for joining us. Thank you.